Okay, so we have seen how second order differential equations of a very general type can be you know, classified into three types hyperbolic, parabolic and elliptic PDEs. So in this lecture we will see how we will concentrate on the hyperbolic PDEs and how we will show in detail how it, one can make a transformation to bring it to the canonical form. Okay, so we saw how you know you, there is this transformation zeta which is some function of x comma y and eta function of x comma y which can take your general PDE of this kind and rewrite it is as a different PDE but of the same type right. So in other words specifically d squared minus 4 ac here is the sign of b small b squared minus 4 ac is going to be the same as the sign of capital B squared minus 4 times capital A times capital C right. So in, in this transformation where zeta and eta are independent uh, new coordinates you can think of them as and um, so the reason why we want to do this is we can take this PDE which in general is in a more complicated form and bring it into a simpler form right and it is what is called a canonical form and once you have the canonical form you know we will see how sometimes it is possible to like immediately just simply write down the solution. So that is the advantage of getting the canonical form. So and we also saw we you know uh, we worked out in some detail how these coefficients are related a is related capital A is related to uh, you know small a small b small c and all these partial derivatives right. So this comes from just some uh, careful bookkeeping right. So we take this uh, transformation and uh, you know we have seen how it is possible to go from one set of variables to the other set of variables and make use of the chain rule and work this out. Capital A is related to the small a, b, c in terms of these and these partial derivatives in this manner. Likewise b can be written like in here, c comes about from here, c somewhat similar to the expression for a. Then we have the, this expression for d and this expression for e, f and g really remain unchanged right. So these f and the g are the last two terms. So if you have not already done this you should go back and look at the previous lecture and and make sure that all these equations are correct and you can directly check them for yourselves right. So we have seen how you know the discriminant of either of these differential equations. So all the information about the type of the differential equation is contained in these first three terms a, b and c small a b and c or capital A b and c does not matter we just look at b squared minus 4 ac and in this lecture we are focusing on the hyperbolic type. So b squared minus 4 ac is, is greater than 0 for hyperbolic PDEs and when this is the case it is convenient to choose our transformation such that both a and c are 0 right. So after all why do we want to make a transformation we want to make our transformation in, so that the resulting PDE is you know simpler to work with right. So let us set A capital A and capital C to be 0 and so this immediately will actually lead to substantial simplification. So what it does is so we have this expression for capital A and we have this expression for capital C. So we, so this if you are going to put both of them to 0 it means that we have to choose our transformations in such a way that these expressions are both equal to 0 right. So this uh, I mean there is a way to re, uh, rewrite this in terms of a quadratic equation right. So in order to do that it is convenient to define these two quantities. So the ratio of these derivatives dou z by dou x divided by dou z by dou y if I am calling going to call it r and dou eta by dou x divided by dou eta by dou y if I call this s. Then we observe that in fact both of these I mean both of these are really quadratic equations you can divide throughout with dou zeta um, by dou y the whole square and likewise you can take this and divide throughout by dou eta by dou y square. So then you get a quadratic equation in dou zeta by dou x divided by dou zeta by dou y or equivalently in terms of dou eta by dou x divided by dou eta by dou y that is in terms of where r or s are the you know roots basically they are roots of the same quadratic equation which I am writing it as a chi squared plus b chi plus c. So if I take these two to be distinct roots 
right there are two roots for this quadratic equation and I take R to be one of the roots and S to be the other root then I can write this as R is equal to minus B plus square root of B square minus 4 AC divided by 2 A and S is equal to minus B minus square root of the discriminant B square minus 4 AC the whole thing divided by 2 A. So this is a parabo uh, this is a hyperbolic differential equation PD therefore we know that B squared minus 4 AC is greater than 0 so both R and S are are real numbers right. So these will turn out to be slopes of some very special directions right. So you should remember that we are at some point x comma y and we are making a transformation to some other two coordinates zeta and and uh, zeta and uh, eta. Now so we can think of there are these two special directions uh, at the point x, x comma y along which this curve zeta of x comma y remains a constant right zeta of x comma y at that point itself takes some value. So if we look at a direction uh, along which this zeta of x comma y is the same then we can write d zeta is equal to dou zeta by dou x times dx plus dou zeta by dou y is equal to times dy is equal to 0 right because it is I mean it is a constant along this curve. But what is this curve? That curve is really nothing but it is given by this differential equation dv by dx is equal to minus this ratio dou zeta by dou x divided by dou zeta by dou y. But we have already worked this out this ratio it is minus r. So if we can solve for this we get this curve you know corresponding to um, one of this one of these directions special directions at the point x comma y and likewise if we look at the other curve eta of x comma y is equal to c2 then that is going to correspond to dv or dy by dx is equal to minus s right which is the other root for this quadratic equation right. I mean we, we choose these two distinct roots otherwise we will basically get the same direction but there are actually two different directions corresponding to x comma y you know along which um, you know these, these curves remain invariant and so these are called characteristic you know the, these equations represent a f the family of characteristics uh, or in the equations are called characteristic equations. From the family of equations we can actually read off zeta of x comma y and eta of x comma y. I mean ultimately we are actually interested in these transformations zeta of x comma y and eta of x comma y which can give us you know A equal capital A equal to 0 and capital C equal to 0 right. So then we found that in order to do this we can uh, find these directions dy by dx is equal to minus r and dy by dx we can solve for this from which we can extract zeta, the, the curve the family zeta of x comma y equal to c1 and eta of x comma y equal to c2 and by the moment we extract these families immediately we can pull out this transformation I mean we, are, we really care about the transformation itself more than these families of curves right. So but the thing is the moment we solve for these differential equations we get these families of curves and looking at these equations for these families of curves immediately we can actually read off the correct transformation right. So this is sort of best best understood with the aid of an example. So we will look at an example but the key, the key point is that if once we have found these transformations zeta and eta then what we do is we just go back and plug in in the original PDE and then we will see that doing this carefully working out all these partial derivatives involved and so on and rewriting the original PDE in terms of a PDE involving these new independent variables zeta and eta you will get a form which is either like this or like this and in fact we can argue that these two are really the same right. So all of this is best illustrated with the aid of an example so let us look at an example. Suppose we wish to solve this partial differential equation 2 times dou squared u by dou x squared plus 5 times dou squared u by dou x dou y plus 2 times dou squared u by dou y squared equal to 0 right. So this is you know not a very complicated example in the sense that there are these terms d e f which are already and g are all, all 0 and so we are only focusing on these a b and c. So here we will immediately see that a, b and c are just numbers they are not even functions of x comma y 
right. So, if we look at a equal to 2, b equal to 5 and c equal to 2, the discriminant we see is b squared minus 4 ac is 25 minus uh, 16 which is 9 which is greater than 0 and it is the same at all points x comma y. So, indeed this is a partial differential equation of the hyperbolic type and it is the, the hyperbolic type for all x and y. So, now according to our prescription we must look for the family of characteristics and in order to find it what we do is we solve for this differential equation dy by dx is equal to minus minus r minus r where r is simply given by minus b plus square root of b square minus 4a see the whole thing divided by 2a which you know you can plug in and see it is just 1 by 2 right. So, b squared is so this is 9 that gives you a 3 minus 5 plus 3 minus 2 divided by 2a which is 2. So, which is you know the minus sign cancels and so we are left with just 1 over 2 and the other uh, characteristic equation is given by dy by dx is equal to minus of minus b minus square root of b, b squared minus 4ac. So, this time you will get a minus 5 minus 3. So, that is minus 8 or with an overall minus sign outside. So, it is 8 divided by 2a 4 by a which is just plus 2 right. So, there are these two differential equations, but both of these are very easy to solve and in fact both of them turn out to be straight lines in this case. So, for the first one of this is y equal to half x plus c1 and the second of this is y is equal to 2x plus c2. So, but really the both of these are like families of straight lines right. So, which pass through the point x comma y. So, it is convenient to rewrite them as y minus half times x is equal to c1 and y minus 2x is equal to c2. And once we see this, so this is of the form zeta of x comma y equal to c1 that is one family and this is eta of x comma y is equal to c2. So, from which we immediately get these the transformations which are really what we are after zeta of x comma y is y minus half x and eta of x comma y is y minus 2x. So, now if we go and plug back these two transformations in the original PDE, it is going to give us a PDE which will be in the canonical form right. So, let us go back and in order to do this again we have to compute all these coefficients a, b, c, d, e, f, g, but really we do not have to worry it is not going to be all of these coefficients are not really play, going to play a role. So, we see that in fact a is going to be 0 and c is going to be 0. This has to be the case because that is how we have chosen this a and c we have taken them to be 0 in our prescription itself, but if you want you can verify this explicitly for this choice of zeta and, and eta. I mean if you just plug in all of this stuff, I mean I have done this for the first case and it indeed it turns out to be 0, you should check it again. B is of course important, it is not going to be 0 and in this case I find that the value is minus 9 over 2, you should again check this. C is going to be 0, I have taken it to be 0, but you should also check this again. And of course, D, E and F are all going to be 0 in this particular case because I mean of the nature of this original equation itself, right. So, even these uh, uh, the, these two guys do not contribute because small d and small e are already absent and these things will not contribute because dog zeta by, uh, so the second order derivative of this, these are straight lines and when you are taking second order derivatives they are just going to go to 0. So, d does not uh, exist or it just goes to 0 and capital E is 0, f and g are also 0 because original differential equation p d we started with itself is not complicated enough to have these other terms f and g. So, now when we do this carefully we see that there is only one coefficient which has survived and that is just minus 9 by 2. So, the differential equation becomes dou squared u by dou zeta dou eta equal to 0 or which is really the same thing as saying dou squared u by dou zeta dou eta equal to 0 which is in the canonical form. Now, we can integrate this once right. So, this is like a constant and and then you can in, integrate a second time you know f of zeta comes about um, you know you can integrate with respect to one of these treating the other as a constant or and then you can do it again and so that is going to give you another constant but you know this constant can be a function of the other variable in each of these. So, like for example, here if you take a de partial derivative of with respect to u uh, with, with respect to zeta, you see that the first one will survive, the second one is 0 because it is really a constant as far as the first variable is concerned and then you take the second derivative the other one will also go. So, the 
the solution is you know trivial to write down immediately once we have this canonical form and where f and g are arbitrary functions. Now going back to the original variables we can immediately write down u of x comma y is equal to f of y minus a half x plus g of y minus 2x. So that is the power of this canonical form is that we can actually write down the general solution we can sort of immediately by inspection write it down. Now let me quickly tell you how if we had used these slightly different variables alpha is equal to zeta plus eta and beta equal to zeta minus eta then you know this dou u by dou zeta itself can be written in terms of you can check this as dou u by dou alpha plus dou u by dou beta because after all dou, dou alpha by dou zeta is 1 and dou beta by dou zeta is equal to 1. So likewise you can write these dou squared u by dou zeta dou, dou eta in terms of all of this stuff and so you get dou squared u by dou, dou alpha squared. So it is going to be uh, um, uh, so let us look at um, so the slightly different way of writing this. So we should have we should be a little more careful and actually put this 2 here but it is just a matter of some notation. So it should be um, Um, so that is dou, dou beta squared and indeed these two, uh, two terms will cancel and then we are left with just dou beta squared so which is also which is the other canonical form. So let me actually replace this as, as well. And so this would be our, you know, one of the two canonical forms. So I have said that it can be written in this manner or it can be written in this manner, right. So this is the form that we just found in our example and I am just, I have also showed you how explicitly one can go from one form to the other, okay. That is all for this lecture. Thank you.